Welcome into another edition of the Coach Shinnick Show. I'm Will Kennedy along with UWF head football coach Pete Shinnick. It's our last one of the season and, and it's, you know, as high as we were in 2019 to win the national championship, it's always difficult to end a season and it was a tough one. First round of the playoffs at home and, and coach, I know it's hard to digest. You were telling me before we started recording here that these are some of the toughest moments. No, they really are. And, I, and I'll tell you, the, the, the pain that I feel is really for our senior players who do not have an opportunity to practice this week and to play again this week. And that's the hardest thing as a coach is to, you know, feel like we didn't do everything that we possibly could on the field that, you know, we know we're capable of doing. And now we sit here and our season ends. And, you, you know, 28 teams in Division II are blessed to have the opportunity to play in the playoffs, okay? One of them is going to go away really happy. Everybody else is going to go, man, what if? And, that, you know, we're one of the what ifs. And uh, it's a frustrating feeling. Uh, again, I ache for our seniors because they have given so much to this program and have done so much to put us in the position that we are. Uh, I just, it, it's a terrible way to end for them. And I, I could not feel uh, worse for how they feel. Before we take a look at the highlights, and I said this on the broadcast, I think it's a testament to, to you and this program and how quickly you've gotten to where you are that, you know, Fifth year of football, you expect to compete for a national championship. Yeah. You're disappointed when you get knocked out of the playoffs, and that's that's a dream for many programs at this step. No, it is, and I told our staff, uh, you know, when we got back together uh, this week that, you, you know, look, what we've done in the last four years is really amazing, uh, and at some point in time, we'll be able to reflect on that. Right now, the sting of this current loss um, is, you know, lingering and hanging, uh, but really, I, I, again, I could not be prouder of some of the accomplishments that we have gotten done, and like you say, uh, you know, a lot of people are just dying to get to the playoffs, and I mean, now we get to the playoffs, and it's like, well, well, we, we got a high expectation, and uh, I don't want to lower that expectation. We want to continue to have that, and I think with that will come some disappointment uh, at times. But um, yeah, really, really happy with where we're, you know, where we're at as a program uh, and what we've been able to accomplish. Let's take a look at the highlights. It was the first playoff game at home, Blue Wahoo Stadium, and a perfect day for it uh, on a Saturday. And game starts off, and, and you were saying, I mean, you don't expect this. They come out on offense, and they're the champs of their conference, and it's a tough opponent, somebody we don't know all that well. First or second play of the game, they throw a little hitch, and it's gone to the house. Yeah, it's one thing to go deep. It's one thing to beat somebody over the top. It's, it's one thing to come up with a nice route combination. It, it, it's another thing to just throw a short pass and miss a tackle. I mean, that's kind of a... As my son uh, Elijah said on the sideline, he goes, "Wow, that's really unfortunate." I'm like, "Yeah, that's that's a great way to what describe it." A great way it. to describe it. No, exactly. That was perfect. Uh, and you, you know, when you look at that, you're like, "Oh, you got to be kidding me! How, how how does that take place?" And really, I felt like kind of the first series of events was like that. And so then we kick off. Marcus, who's been phenomenal returning kicks, you know, they kick off to us and bobbles the ball, and we're at the nine yard line. Uh, we miss on a deep pass and. You know, and then all of a sudden we're punting and they got the ball at the 49 yard line. So uh, the, the, the first two to five minutes of the game was like, OK, wait a minute. Am I, am I viewing this thing? And we did respond uh, and we did find a way to bounce back. But it was really it, it was a different experience. They, they were able to score off that second possession. So it's 14 nothing. And I said, you know, the bad news is we're down 14 nothing. The good news is. We've, we've been here before this yeah. season a couple of times. I thought the defense really turned up from there after those two first two drives and really dominated for a long period. Yeah, I, our defense kept us in the game. They played as well as I think they're, um, you know, they've played all season long and really got us back in it. I think offensively we were able to get a field goal and then, uh, you know, we were able to get a touchdown there in the first half to cut that lead. We missed a tremendous opportunity right before the half, thought it was going to go our way. We, we actually got the right call reversed, and then we turned the ball over, uh, which is something you know we have not done in the red zone. We've been very productive in the red zone. So come back in the second half, defense gets two turnovers, we get the lead, and really we have all the momentum and everything going the right way, uh, and then we get a punt blocked. You ripped off 27 unanswered points, and, and we get to the fourth quarter, and there it is before, before we look at the punt block where you're, you're leading by 13. you got about 12 minutes to play. Things are looking good. And sometimes, and there's moments all through this game, we've already touched on a couple of them, but that's one. It was, it was like a thunderbolt out of the sky. It, it really was. I, I think we were all shocked by it. I think our players were like, whoa, what just took place? Um, it happened. We end up getting the kickoff. And, I mean, now we're marching. I feel like we got the momentum right back. I felt like our offense responded. We got the momentum uh, right back. And then uh, we throw an interception. 
Uh, ball bounces off uh, Mav. Uh, it was, you know, it was a hot ball. I mean, it was coming. We've seen him make that catch before. We've seen him make it a couple of times. For whatever reason, that happened, and that's really where this game flipped. Um, and I think those two possessions back to back uh, really gave them life. I, I felt like our defense had taken their life away. I felt like our offense had answered. We were really in a position, and you know, right before the punt block, I'm sitting there going, "Okay, man, if we could have held the ball maybe for about three more minutes on offense, there, we had to punt." Uh, I was like, "All right, I need three more minutes. I got to get a stop here." And then, boom, the punt happens, and then you know, then we're back in that in that race. They put together a long drive, I think 13 plays, 70 yards, and come down and tie the game up. But there's still about three minutes left. You get the ball back. I think everybody in the stadium was feeling like, yeah. hey, Griffin Sarah's been red hot. We just got to get down there to field goal range. Yeah, and missed a couple opportunities there. We had a miscommunication uh, on the third down. I felt like, uh, you know, we had a wide receiver. Austin knew where we wanted to go. Had a miscommunication as to where he should be. Or I think we might score a touchdown on that third down. And that's really the entire game. I mean, as I go back and just think of each problem, process we're so close but nothing went our way overtime comes and it hadn't been a while since we played overtime back to 2019 with mississippi college in the same facility you get you get a field goal not quite offense isn't really clicking there yeah. you're able to kick and get the three it puts the pressure on them a little bit but they're tough inside 25 yards especially when they get some breaks no they did and i i, I felt like their quarterback came to life i feel like we had him stopped a couple of times um and he just made a couple guys miss and really he he was the difference in the game evading tackles and uh, scrambling and making it work for their offense um, he kept drives alive we weren't able to get him down on the ground when we needed to I think we had them a couple times there uh, in the overtime where that would have made them uh, kick a field goal. Just didn't happen. 33-30, the final score. Tough way to go out, as Coach said. 9-2, and two, though. When you look back, it'll be a 9-2 you know, and two season. And some, some firsts were accomplished. GSC co-championship and that kind of stuff. Another playoff appearance. We'll take a break. We'll come back. Coach will spend one more segment with us. We'll talk about some of the guys that have meant so much to this program and look ahead a little bit to a bright future for the Argos. Coming up next on the Coach Shenick Show. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. With a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida, no limits. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Look at that. That's called a Takes Two Hands burger. Fresh 100% beef stacked high with melted cheese, hand chopped veggies, and everything else you could possibly ask for. Yep, that's your Whataburger, made exactly the way you want it. Because sometimes you gotta take matters into your own hands. What a burger, just like you like it. For those who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Hello, I'm Zach Pullman. I'm a graduate assistant here at the University of West Florida and I work in athletic communications. When I found out that I received the Bright Future Scholarship, I knew this would take a burden off of my family and kind of help me through college. Given the opportunity to pay for my complete undergraduate degree, I did not have to worry about student debt. So I was able to continue my journey of education. Just want to thank the Florida Lottery for not only helping me through my college journey, but countless others in the state of Florida and all they do to help education within the state. Welcome back into the Coach Shinnick Show. Spending some time with UWF head football coach Pete Shinnick. And, you know, when you kind of look back and break down the season, this is the end of an era in some ways. And, you know, COVID last year, no season, coming off the 2019 National Championship. And you had guys that 
They've been here a while, yeah. been here a long time with that extra COVID year. They've meant a lot to this program, and you've talked about them uh, throughout this season. But And then you look down after the game, and you see Trent Archie, and you see you know Rodney Coates and some of the guys that have been around. And then some guys that joined just for one season, the Shea Campbell, Stephon Williams, we can name a bunch, Kenny Roman. Um, I know that's hard as a coach because you have that personal connection. Well, you do, and, and you bring them all here for an opportunity, okay? And so you, you, you go back to Rodney and Trent, who – Hey, we, we, we think we can build something special here. Come, come to us in 2015 and see what this is going to look like. And, man, what an amazing run those two guys have had. Uh, they're both UWF graduates working on second degrees. I mean, what an amazing deal that they've been able to get accomplished. Played in three playoffs, two national championship games, won a national championship. Then, you, you know, you mentioned, you mentioned Kenny Roman, Stefan, and Shea. And, uh, you know, that group, you know, hey, look, guys, you're, you're going to join one of the best teams in the division, too. And I still feel like we are. Uh, Obviously, Saturday did not go the way we'd hoped, but they were a tremendous addition to us. Um, and, you know, whether it's DeAnthony Bell, Keon Holder, you know, who've been here two years, Matt Gotel, uh, all the guys, I don't want to miss any, but I mean, all the guys that have been with us, you know, on those varying levels of time, um, you know, we, we feel like they have contributed so much to our program. And, you know, we, we want them to feel like family. We look forward to seeing them come back. We, we've had a lot of former players come back, watch games, support us. You know, we're just obviously five years into this now starting that process uh, but you know my, my heart aches as we started the show my, my heart aches for those guys because they really gave the program so much no matter how long they've been with us or how short they've been with us. Mike Della, another name, a guy yeah, who's been here, definitely. you know, one of those that was here from freshman year on up. And you mentioned DeAnthony Bell. I know a lot of people have asked me throughout this year, like, who's going to be that first guy that's going to get drafted that's going to play in the NFL? And there's no guarantee of, of who it's going to be. He's put himself in a nice position. And I think we touched on it uh, last week a little bit, but to get a little more into it, he's been invited to play in an NFL PA game, kind of kind of a showcase game for uh, some other Division II players and other players as well. He's got a good opportunity. He does. And the Anthony's really done everything that we've asked and, you know, put on film what the NFL scouts want to see and very excited about the bowl game opportunity that he has. There'll be every NFL team will be represented there. He'll get a chance to showcase his talents. Uh, he'll get a chance to go against other players, you know, in his in his same situation. A lot of guys have been drafted and gotten free agency out of that bowl. So I think that's a huge, huge plus uh, for him. And we got we got other guys that have that aspiration uh, and that desire that and we're working on some things for them and hopefully those things happen so that they get an opportunity to uh, showcase what they can do and how they can do it as well. The success on the field, the successes like that potentially off the field and going on forward helps you recruit, helps you bring in. I know you guys go right back to it and get out there and, and we've seen the guys that you've brought in and, and some of those will be through the portal and some of those will be coming down from Division One. but a Will Breland and, and Anthony Johnson Jr. and guys that you found sure. locally or, or in the state in high school. The future's bright. We are losing a lot of people but you played a lot of people this year, and there's guys that are kind of ready to step up and take their chance. Yeah, and we feel like we have a lot coming back, and we feel like we obviously have some holes to fill. You don't you don't have 26 seniors, uh, you know, uh, you know that you honor on senior day and not have some holes to fill. Uh, a lot of those guys were on the defensive side, but contributors on both sides of the ball. But as you mentioned, I mean, the young guys have played really well. Anthony Johnson, Jr., freshman corner. Uh, Will Breland, freshman linebacker. Uh, Zach Elam, freshman offensive lineman. You know, so we've played a lot of young guys. Jared Smith, wide receiver, that I think, you know, contribute to that. We've got a lot of guys coming back. We do have some holes to fill, but some of that will be filled with some of the guys that we redshirted and some of the guys that are back up and I think we've become a place where if a guy's looking for a great opportunity to play uh, for a great institution in a great town on a great team uh, we become a viable option for him. Shamari Mason by the way only a sophomore so yes. he, he's got a little time left so yeah. that future does look bright and and I know looking you know into next year is tough at this point but you know that schedule is being put together and all that kind of stuff do you know how many days it is till spring practice or have we not? <laughs> I, I, I don't know yet uh, not not counting that uh, uh, but I know we got a while. Uh, but yeah, no, you mentioned Shamari. Austin Reed's a sophomore. David Durden will be a senior. Uh, you know, uh, Jacuri Jackson and Mav Wolfley, both our tight ends. They're both juniors. They're coming back. So we have a lot of guys with, you know, uh, a ton of experience that will be coming back and will be a major part of what we're doing. Well, I know, you know, it was a, it was a tough day for all of us for Argo Nation as well, but what a fantastic season in many ways. Nine wins, a couple record attendances at home, and, and the future does look bright, and Coach will be looking forward to next season. No, thank you very much.
Coming up next on the program, we got a lot of other stuff to talk about. Volleyball, mm -hmm. just rolling GSC so. champs in the tournament, 33-1, and one, soccer playing on into the NCAAs, and basketball underway as well. More coming your way on the Coach Shinnick Show. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pregame grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Hello, I'm Zach Pullman. I'm a graduate assistant here at the University of West Florida and I work in athletic communications. When I found out that I received the Bright Future Scholarship, I knew this would take a burden off of my family and kind of help me through college. Given the opportunity to pay for my complete undergraduate degree, I did not have to worry about student debt. So I was able to continue my journey of education. Just want to thank the Florida Lottery for not only helping me through my college journey, but countless others in the state of Florida and all they do to help education within the state. Look at that. That's called a takes two hands burger. Fresh 100% beef stacked high with melted cheese, hand chopped veggies, and everything else you could possibly ask for. Yep, that's your Whataburger, made exactly the way you want it. Because sometimes you gotta take matters into your own hands. What a burger, just like you like it. who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute, for those who move. It was another action-packed week for UWF Athletics, starting off with end-of-the-year conference awards. Austin Reed was named GSC Offensive Player of the Year. Wide receiver David Durden, center Dalton Simpler, guard Mike Dilla, tackle Jacob Bruce, and defensive lineman Matthew Gotell, linebacker Shea Campbell, safety D'Anthony Bell, nickelback Trent Archie, and special teams utility performer Marcus Clayton were all named to the GSC All-Conference First Team. Named to the second team was Shamari Mason, Karan Ashley, and Stephon Williams. Volleyball also had end-of-the-year awards from the Gulf South Conference. Bracey Ayan was named GSC Player of the Year. Taylor Van Eckren was named GSC Setter of the Year. Ashton Marshall was named GSC Libero of the Year. And head coach Melissa Walter was named GSC Coach of the Year. Maddie Cooler, Bracey Ayan, Ashton Marshall, and Taylor Van Eckren were all named to the GSC All-Conference First Team. And Tyler Feasey was named to the GSC All-Conference Second Team. Maddie Cooler, Tyler Feasey, Taylor Van Eckren, and Bracey Ayan were also named to the Cosida Academic All-District Team. Volleyball won their 10th Gulf South Conference Championship on Sunday after defeating the Montebello Falcons and in the semifinals defeated Mississippi College 3-1 as well. Taylor Van Eckert was named Most Outstanding Player of the Tournament. Bariccia Yon, Taylor Van Eckert, and Ashton Marshall were all named to the GSC All-Tournament team. Volleyball was awarded the number one seed in the South Region, and they will be hosting the South Regional Tournament December 2nd through the 5th. For all the updates on that, be sure to check GoArgos.com. Women's soccer continued their postseason run down in Daytona Beach, Florida. In round one, they defeated Valdosta State 2-0 with goals coming from Peyton Peppers and Destiny Hammock. On Sunday, they defeated the number two seed Embry-Riddle 1-0 in overtime. Blair Cohen scored the golden goal. Now women's soccer will host the next two rounds of the NCAA tournament right here at the UWF Soccer Complex. They'll play Florida Tech on December 3rd, and the winner of that game will play on December 5th in the quarterfinals. Men's soccer saw their season come to an end on Sunday after falling to Chawan in 14 rounds of penalty kicks. Men's basketball went on the road and beat Tuskegee and then had their home opener against Albany State and defeated the Rams. Here's Luchal Tate. First game for me here was being Argo, and I just wanted to get a dub. Uh, I liked the crowd. Coach called to play for me. I was like, all right, let's go win the game. Um, it's been a long game. And first home game, of course, so we can't, can't let them come in in our home place and win. On this team, we're very talented. We got a lot of different players that can do, like, that can score. A lot of people that have many talents. Um, we don't have to just get the ball to one person and then just tell them to go win it for us. Anybody can make a play at any time. 
Women's basketball also played two games, going to Pensacola Christian College and getting a win across town, and then coming home for their home opener and defeated Spring Hill College. Here's Jacqueline Jarnett. It's been amazing. I love my team. I feel like we have such good chemistry and we just get each other, so I couldn't do without my teammates. Tonight was a little rough, but I knew I had to come out strong on the defensive side, and I think we all just stepped it up. We just need to keep up the intensity. When we have high energy, um, we can't be stopped. I think we have to keep pounding the paint because when that's not open, we just kick out, and we just have a lot of different ways to score, so just keep up the high intensity. This Sunday, men and women's basketball will be back in action at the UWF Fieldhouse. Men's basketball will take on Georgia College at 3 p.m. and the women's basketball team will play William Carey at 5 p.m. Be sure to check GoArgos.com or follow GoArgos on Instagram and Twitter for all the latest updates and information on UWF Athletics. We'll be back with the final segment in just a minute. What does Argo spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Hello, I'm Zach Pullman. I'm a graduate assistant here at the University of West Florida and I work in athletic communications. When I found out that I received the Bright Future Scholarship, I knew this would take a burden off of my family and kind of help me through college. Given the opportunity to pay for my complete undergraduate degree, I did not have to worry about student debt. So I was able to continue my journey of education. Just want to thank the Florida Lottery for not only helping me through my college journey, but countless others in the state of Florida and all they do to help education within the state. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. With a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida, no limits. Whataburger made exactly the way you want it. Because sometimes you got to take matters into your own hands. What a burger, just like you like it. For those who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Welcome back into the Coach Shinnick Show. This is our last Coach Shinnick Show of the season. We'll be going into Argo Sports Insider starting next week and kind of a, more, a shortened version as we go through in from the end of our fall sports into our winter sports. And speaking of, basketball is underway. Good starts for both programs. The men are now 4-0. and They played a game on Sunday at home against Albany State. Coach Jeff Burkhammer, the home opener, bringing his team in. Good performances all the way around. You play 10 players, everybody scores. You get nice performances from Latrell Tate and Daniel Sofield and, and pretty much everybody chipping in in this game. Back and forth right to the end. It was a Latrell Tate layup at the end that pulls off the two-point victory. 78-76, so the Argos get to 4-0. They'll have a midweek game just across the bridge over in Mobile, Alabama against Spring Hill before playing again on the weekend. And we caught up with Coach Chef Burkhammer after the victory. Great environment, found a way to win, um, you know, gave up the lead late and found a way to get the lead back, got a couple good stops, got to the rim and made free throws, and then ran a good set late in the game, and, and uh, Latrell made a really good play to finish against a big guy chasing him. So uh, really, really good play, and then nice job at the end of the game of forcing a hard shot. So happy for the win, happy for the win, happy to get to 4-0, happy to get a home win, and you know, excited for these guys. 
going to be different guys each night. We've got pretty good depth. We can play a bunch of different people. And sometimes it just comes down to matchups. Sometimes it's just who's playing well. It may be foul trouble, like first half tonight. Wendell gets in foul trouble, so somebody else has to come in and play. Jackson came in and did a good job. So it's just going to depend game to game on who's who's getting stuff done. And, uh, you know, in the first half, we brought our second group in there with 12 minutes left, and they, they were the group that really helped us kind of get back in the game a little bit. So uh, it, it'll change every game, but I, I like that we have some depth. Well, I think any time you can win close games and you can teach from that, that's a lot better than losing close games and teaching from that. So it's nice to win uh, close games and, and – this one was a really good test for us because we had to fight from behind a little bit late, uh, had to get stops, had to get a rebound, had to make a play. So a uh, really, really good win for us. The men will play next on Sunday. Georgia College comes into the field house for a 3 o'clock tip. It's another doubleheader with the women playing after them. They will have William Carey in a 5 o'clock tip off. They got their third win of the season. In fact, picked up wins two and three, beating Pensacola Christian in a game on Friday night last week, and then they were at home. They were able to pick up that third win of the season as they had Spring Hill coming in for the back half of the doubleheader on Sunday here. Jacqueline Jarnett was a double-double and along the way with Zoe Pillar also putting in a double-double, so the bigs getting it done, and then some good play in the backcourt from Maddie Griffin, the point guard, pushing the pace, and it really was a tight game throughout most, but in the fourth quarter, the Argos are able to pull away, end up with a big double-digit win as they're setting themselves up for a week off before they play again on Sunday, and we were able to talk to Coach Stephanie Lawrence Yelton after the victory. Well, we're super excited to be back at home and having a great crowd tonight. Uh, it was amazing to be able to step back into the field house and uh, see a lot of those smiling faces. Uh, we had a lot of our fans back that didn't get to see us play last year who were eager to see really what the Argos are going to be about this year. So um, it, it that was great for us, great for the team, great for our coaching staff, and obviously great for our fans. Um, but Spring Hill came in ready to play. I thought they, you know, gave a, a good fight for us. The game was pretty tight, you know, close all the way. Uh, we were able to kind of pull that, um, pull it out here in the fourth and kind of keep that lead with a couple of huge plays from Fanny Holmey with those call charges that really helped us keep our lead um, and kind of extend it to, to take home the win. But super proud of this bunch. They played hard. We didn't shoot the ball really well tonight, but we did other things well, and that helped us win. Yeah, I think our team chemistry is great right now. We've got a group of of women who are go-getters. Um, they allow me to coach them in practice. They allow me to teach them in practice. They don't get offended uh, when I point things out that they've got to get better at. Um, they do a lot of great things that we cheer them on in practice with. You know, there's a lot of a lot of work we still got to get done. I mean, it's still early in the season, but I think there's a lot of promise uh, to this team, and I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited to see where they're going to go. So basketball to recap again this week coming up, a midweek game for the men over at Spring Hill College, and then that doubleheader on Sunday, 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock tip-offs for the two teams after Thanksgiving. So it's going to be a busy week even with the holiday wedged in between. We hope you have a happy Thanksgiving. Don't forget to check out GoArgos.com for all the latest information, schedules, and all the things that are going on with UWF Athletics. The Argo Armada app right there on your phone or tablet, also a great way to keep track of things. This is our last one for the Coach Shinnick Show, but we'll see you next time on Argo Sports Insider.